Hello YouTube, welcome back to Brunger Builds. Today we are turning this rolling shelf into a mobile paint booth. Links for everything I used in the description. I knew I wanted the inside of the paint booth to be white and I also knew I needed some time for the paint to dry before I started cutting. So I decided to do that first. I've got a ton of paint left over from a home remodel that I did a few years back. So it was nice to finally be able to break some of it out and use it, since Sherwin-Williams is expensive. So I just rolled on a quick coat of paint, nothing too fancy. I think I ended up coming back and doing a second coat. I sat down to write out all my plans. I was really flying by the seat of my pants for this one. Uh, so there's a lot of measuring and remeasuring and remeasuring the remeasure. The shelving unit I got off Amazon. Uh, it's got this handy dandy little mechanism for clicking around the vertical rails and holding the shelves in place with basically just like friction and that little ridge you see. Uh, it's a little fiddle faddly. I'll spare you the uh, amount of time it took me to figure out the eventual layout, but I did get it in the end. And there you go. You'll see this box a few times. This is a ceiling vent fan for a bathroom. Um, ignore it. I don't know what I was thinking. This is a 50 CFM fan. It was not going to do what I needed it to do. And I don't know what I was thinking. So here, I uh, just took my nice white OSB, ripped it down to a bunch of different sizes. It was approximately three feet tall and four feet wide, something like that. Like I said, I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants with this one. So there's a lot of just trial and error, trying to figure out exactly what I wanted. I knew I wanted kind of a shelving section on the left side, uh, and I knew I needed space for the fan. I was just trying to use one four by eight piece of OSB so that I wasn't spending a bunch of money. Like I said, ignore everything I'm doing with this bathroom vent fan. I was just trying to save a couple bucks, uh, but in the end, it did not have nearly enough suction, uh, didn't move nearly enough air, but I figured I'd show you kind of my trial and error anyway. I ended up ripping this all off and plugging up that hole. So I threw it up, it was looking good, and there it sat for about a week as I mold my choice of fan over in my head and finally decided, yes, I did indeed need to spend a few extra bucks and get a beefy fan. Got this off of Amazon. I think it was about 160 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description. It doesn't come with its own cable, so I made my own using a extension cord I bought off Amazon as well. Just kind of pulled the casing back, stripped the wires. Again, nothing too crazy. I stripped the wires back a little too far, and so I just threw some electrical tape over the whole thing just to be extra sure that no metal was going to be touching metal. And in my haste, I completely forgot to pop it through the little side door thing, so I had to make my own little opening for the cable. Just wrapped it with electrical tape so that uh, there was no sharp edges. I didn't like how much the cable wiggled, so I ended up just chopping some little pieces of plywood down and taping them together. Kind of helped the wiggle. There's not going to be much wiggle really, it's just going to stay in its spot, but just to be extra sure. Here I'm rough fitting the fan, and miraculously it fit perfectly. I needed to transfer the mounting holes from the fan to the OSB. So I just grabbed some graph paper and lined it up with the bottom of the fan and punched some holes 
and then I could orient the bottom of the paper to where the fan would be sitting and have the exact hole spacing that I needed, like so. I just kind of eyeballed the six inch hole, just cut it out with my jigsaw, just wanted to be quick, and I knew that I'd be going over the whole thing with ducting tape anyway, and so everything would be, it'd be fine. Here I am just cleaning up the hole, and I ended up putting some insulation around. This was kind of redundant and actually really unnecessary because I did go back through and tape up the hole with aluminum ducting tape. So here you can see it was a pretty fiddly little task to get the little bolts in there. I ended up taping the nut to a long strip of tape so I could grab it if it dropped out of my fingers. But there was just enough space for my fingers to stick right through there. And with a little bit of fiddling, I could get a nut onto each of those bolts and then tighten it down. Worked out pretty good. The bolts I was using were pretty long, so I did double check that they were not gonna be hitting the fan once it was spinning and they cleared just fine. Here I'm fiddling around with the filter position and how I would make a little door to access the filter to change it once it gets dirty. The filter I'm using is just an HVAC filter I got at Home Depot. It's definitely not gonna meet any sort of OSHA standards. Um, I'm just gonna be spraying water-based acrylics mostly and here or there some rattle cans. I am going to eventually make a long duct that kind of sticks out my garage and can vent to the outside. Uh, so don't plan on using this indoors without ducting to the outside. Here I'm demonstrating just how much air this thing sucks through it. I think it's like 420, maybe 50 CFM. Here I'm trying to figure out the best position for the door, I didn't know if there would be like an optimal angle that would create more suction than another angle. So it was just a lot of trial and error um, using the smoke just to see if it pulled any better in different positions. A lot of just back and forth until I eventually got what I thought was the best I could do. On the back side of the door, I stuck some foam weather strip. I think it's for windows or doors. It's like one inch thick so it's it's pretty thick stuff but I just did the perimeter on three sides and left that one side on the right blank because that is where the air is sucking from. The goal was to make the door as airtight as possible and just have air sucking through that one slot on the right. Threw some paint on it real quick and went around the edges too, just to clean things up a bit. I got this light off of Amazon as well, so I'll link that. It's a high CRI LED bulb, which means no flicker on camera, which will be great for when I'm filming. Just went around and did some cable management, zip tied a couple cables, here in the back, you can see it's a little ugly, but it gets the job done, so I'm not too worried about it. Threw my little air compressor on the shelf. It also plugs into the back with the light and the vent fan. I got a cheap shower curtain and fiddled around with that to get the placing that I liked. Uh, originally, I was gonna just have one big sheet that kind of threw over the top when I was painting, but then I decided to kind of split it down the middle with a little bit of overlap so that I could have one side down just a bit on the left to kind of maybe add or help with the suction from the fan. All right, now for the shelving. I found this airbrush paint bottle holder file on Thingiverse and 3D printed a few of them. I'm currently printing more of them to go up the left side. As you'll see, I only had enough to do the right side. I didn't really know what I was gonna be doing with this little area. I hadn't really pre-planned any measurements or anything, 
and I had been printing these guys after I had already built the box. So I just kind of fiddled around trying to figure out what the best layout would be for them and eventually decided on running them parallel up the sides. The bottle holders are meant to be modular, but I think they're only meant to be laid out side by side and I needed them to be on top of each other. So I had to cut that little part of the base so that the bottles could fit into the top rack of the next print. And there you have it. I was able to fit four. I plan on doing four more on the other side as well. After that was done, I threw up a quick little wire across the top of the paint booth. I just wanted to have something there that I could hang things off of if I wanted. I've got these little alligator clips that I can hang wire from, like you see here. I also got this little spinning table. Seems pretty handy. I've never used one before, but I think it'll come in quite handy. And now for the final test. I grabbed a dark brown rattle can. I figured maybe that would show up a little better and it doesn't really on camera, but rest assured the fumes have been sucked quickly and quietly away from the booth. And that concludes this video. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. This paint booth is gonna see a lot of action in the coming weeks. So if you like props, models, really anything Star Wars related, I'm gonna be doing a lot of that on this channel. So I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.